Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. So today's case is going to be about one that, in my opinion, really highlights the fact that you have no idea the outcome of any situation, no matter how safe you think you are going into it. Today we are talking about the mysterious murder of Margaret Martin. Margaret Martin was a 19-year-old student from Luzerne County, Pennsylvania. She was known for being a very shy, goal-oriented, studious young woman with a lot of friends. She graduated Kingston High School in 1937 and then attended Wilkes-Barre Business College to gain secretarial skills. Like I said before, she was studious, so she graduated with honors. On Saturday, December 17th, 17 days after she graduated from business college, she received a phone call from a man offering her a secretary position. A neighbor who received phone calls for the Martin family said this anonymous caller said he was from out of town, setting up an insurance agency and needed secretaries to work for his company. According to him, he heard about her after she was referred to him by Wilkes Bear. She was super appreciative that the college recommended her and she was so eager to have this opportunity, especially so soon after graduating. Margaret and this unknown man, after speaking, agreed to meet up at Kingston Corners, a place not far from the Martin home. Margaret left her home that day telling her mother that she would, quote, be right back. The last time Margaret was supposedly seen was when a man in a Kingston Corners apartment saw a woman who fit her description entering what looked like a brown Plymouth or black sedan. The man behind the wheel was said to be between 25 to 30 years old, had sandy colored hair, and slightly overweight. She had a brief conversation with this man and then entered the car. The witness claimed they didn't get a super good look at the man. That was the best description they could give authorities. They obviously didn't think anything of this. They didn't think to get the license plate of the car. And if this woman getting into this car was really her, then that is the last time she was seen alive by anyone besides her murderer. When she failed to come home that night, her parents knew that something was very off. Margaret was the type of person who was very prompt. She always had a schedule. She valued people's time. She wasn't going to leave her parents worrying all night. So they just knew that something was very fishy, especially because she was meeting up with a man that day that they were unfamiliar with. So this is when they decided to notify police that their daughter was missing. During this time, there was actually a newspaper strike going on with the local press. So because of this, Margaret's murder was not very publicized. Most of the people in the community, even people who knew her or her family, had no idea she was missing. There were a few articles and papers that discussed it, but not many. One article in Evening Star said police were searching for her and she was possibly taken by a man and possibly put in a sex slave ring. The few newspapers that did discuss her disappearance didn't really have long to discuss it as a disappearance because within no time, it was classified as a homicide. Her body was found on December 21st, 1938. Anthony Rezakowski, a 19-year-old muskrat hunter, was laying traps along the freezing cold waters of Keelersburg Creek in Northmoreland Township in Wyoming County. He approached a small bridge when he saw a burlap sack bobbing up and down below it. When he took a closer look, he saw a human hand peeking out from the bag. After four long days, which seemed like four years to the Martin family, Margaret was found, but she was not found alive. And her mother had to be the one to identify her body, which is something no parent should ever have to do, but especially not in the state that Margaret's body was found in. Margaret's murder was absolutely horrific. She was found naked, bound in a clothesline with her legs jammed under her chin. She had deep slashes across her abdomen and legs. It was theorized her murderer possibly attempted to dismember her, but failed. She had also been bludgeoned with a very heavy rock. There were signs of sexual assault before she was ultimately strangled to death. Pretty much right off the bat, 50 state troopers were sent out to search the countryside, and they had high hopes at the beginning. They even told people that they were going to 100% find her killer within 24 hours, but of course, they didn't. Police then received an anonymous tip from someone who claimed they witnessed the man who made the call to Margaret Martin from a phone booth. They described him as being around his late 20s, sandy blonde hair, and quite suave. 
It was discovered this unknown man had called Wilkes-Barre College around 9.15 a.m. on December 17th asking for students who recently graduated who desire to become secretaries. He was given the name of Margaret Martin and another recent graduate. He never called the other woman just Margaret. This does kind of make you think that her murder maybe possibly had his eye on Margaret. Maybe he knew who she was and really wanted to get her phone number and he thought that this would have been a perfect way to get her phone number and make sure that they would meet up. But again, you have to think that this was back in the day. He could have possibly looked in a phone book if he wanted her number that bad and found her family's phone number. So these are just theories. It's really unknown if her murderer did know who she was or not. One unfortunate thing is right after authorities got to Margaret's body, it started snowing, which means any tire tracks or footprints would have been lost very soon. They searched the countryside and never found any more clues. Several weeks later though, they found something very horrific, but it did give them a little bit of hope. About 15 miles away in Forkston, Pennsylvania, inside a steam boiler of an old sawmill, they found burnt clothes. These clothes matched the description of the clothes Margaret was wearing the day she left home. It looked like this might have been the place she was tortured and eventually killed. The place she took her last breath. Outside the sawmill, they did find footprints that looked like they belonged to a man and a woman. Then all of a sudden, the woman's footprints stopped, as if the man picked her up and carried her the rest of the way. Now, there was a man who lived close to the sawmill, and he remembered seeing a fire coming from the sawmill. He knew it was abandoned and no one should be in there, so he let off a few shots from a gun in an attempt to scare them off. Authorities believe that possibly she wasn't fully dismembered because her killer got startled by the gunshot and stopped what he was doing and left the property immediately with her body. On December 24th, while most other families were getting ready for Christmas the following day, the Martins were burying their daughter at St. Ignatius Church. Police officers, family, people who attended school with her, and over a thousand more mourners all attended her funeral. Margaret was buried beside her brother who passed away at age four and was also buried the day before Christmas many years earlier. One of the saddest things in my opinion is that at her funeral, her parents weren't even mentally there because they were too busy focusing on the crowd. There were over a thousand people there and they were just looking at every single person trying to see if any of them fit the description of their daughter's murderer. They were looking for somebody in their late 20s, well put together, sandy hair, but they never saw anybody who fit this description. Two months later in February, they were still on the search but nowhere closer to finding this mystery man. Margaret's mother said, We are sure the police are doing all they can to find the man who took her, but no matter what they do, they cannot bring Margaret alive back to us. The search went on and on, and there were so many times where they got a little bit of hope, and then they hit a dead end, and it was just an emotional roller coaster ride for everyone. Four years later, 21 year old Orban Taylor, a man who lived in New York but a former resident of Wilkes Bear, claimed he was the person responsible for Margaret's murder. He was questioned for over 20 hours, much of his story didn't line up with the evidence found, and he finally admitted he made up the entire thing. This man was never charged with Margaret's murder, but was charged later on for second degree assault and a completely different crime. After two years in prison, he took his own life after drinking a cocktail of typewriter cleaning fluid, orange juice, sugar, and water. Margaret's case has never officially been closed. It is still open, even though they are not currently working on it. They do not believe that they are ever going to discover her killer's identity though. As the years went on, they really had high hopes for a deathbed confession, which is basically when the killer or somebody who knew the killer is on their deathbed, they're dying and they think, you know, I'm not gonna live much longer. How about I just come out with this truth and tell authorities what actually happened? but it doesn't look like they're ever gonna get that. There were a few suspects in this case from someone Margaret used to attend school with who had a crush on her, to a teacher who worked at Wilkes-Barre, to a local mortician, but none of this went anywhere. There was not any evidence to tie anyone to the crime. It was theorized that whoever did it must have been a local because the sawmill where she was thought to be murdered is really out of the way, not a place you just stumble upon, and they must have been used to the rugged terrain of the area. Some believe that he may have been a non-local serial killer and that maybe he just knew the area very well and knew where the sawmill was because he was looking into abandoned places to bring his victims. The reason in later time they leaned towards the serial killer theory is because in 1940, 17-year-old Rachel Taylor was returning from Easter break to finish her freshman year at Penn State. On March 28th, she took a bus from home back 
to college. At around 1.20 a.m., she arrived at college. At around 1.30 a.m., she was seen getting into someone's vehicle. Five hours later, her nude, abused, lifeless body was found by a janitor five miles away at the College Township School in Lamont. Her case still remains unsolved. The killer made another attack at Penn State not long after, but thankfully this person did survive. There were four attacks at Penn State, then three women outside alone near Lock Haven, Pennsylvania were attacked in the summer of 1941. Then the attacks stopped completely, and the person responsible was never found. Authorities thought that maybe the person who killed Margaret and the person who killed Rachel were the same person. Some people did believe that Rachel's killer was possibly influenced by the murder of Margaret and the fashion that it was done in. These are just theories though. As a direct result of Margaret's murder, on December 28, 1938, Pennsylvania State Senator Leo C. Mundy stated he would introduce a bill making sex crimes punishable by execution and requiring registration for all sex offenders. Also, physicians and welfare workers were required to report anyone they came across on the job that showed tendencies towards such offenses. This case, in my opinion, just shows how cruel and twisted this world can unfortunately be. This was a young woman who had just graduated college with honors, she was so intelligent, she had her entire life in front of her, and she thought she had this amazing opportunity, and she was going into it with just a pure heart thinking that nothing could go wrong and look what happened. And this is not just a situation that happened back in the day when people were kind of ignorant towards how this world can really be because I know that topic comes up when it comes to cases of hitchhiking because some people are just like, you know, hitchhiking was so common in the 70s, they weren't used to it. This was a situation that people still get themselves into. Think of how many times we meet people on social media, say it's a mutual friend, a friend through a friend on Facebook, or it's somebody you met on a dating site and you've been hitting it off with and you decide to meet up with them, or Craigslist and you're going for a job interview just like Margaret went on. There was even a few years ago where a man put out an ad on Craigslist and he ended up murdering a few people. That is an actual case. It's scary how careful you have to be in this world. There are so many different ways to protect yourself from pepper spray to a personal self-defense alarm, which I've talked about previously on my channel. I definitely recommend researching into that more so you are not in a situation where you feel completely helpless. Those are really the main reasons that I wanted to talk about Margaret's case on my channel today. I hope that you all have a very safe 2019 and of course, rest of your lives. I love and care for you guys. Dearly. Before I go though, there are two things that I just quickly want to mention. The first thing is I've been getting a lot of comments here on YouTube. It's kind of hard to keep up with them. I've been trying to reply as much as possible or at least like the comment so you know that I saw it and I appreciate it. But if there's something you really want to bring up to me, I would definitely recommend reaching out to me through Instagram. Pretty much every day I take a little bit of time out of my day to respond to every DM on Instagram that I have, so I definitely recommend reaching out to me through that form of social media. The second thing is I've gotten a lot of messages from people asking me to open a PO box so you guys can send me drawings or pictures which I would literally cry over. I'm such a sap when it comes to that sort of stuff. So let me know down below in the comments if that's something you would want me to do, which I wasn't planning on doing that quite yet. So comment down below if you'd be interested in that so I can get an idea of how many people actually care about that. <laughs> so yeah, that's pretty much it for today's video and I will see you all in my next one. Bye guys.